FN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's Kerry Lutz. The date is October 1st, 2015. We are in that dreaded fourth quarter of the year, but back after a month's hiatus, we've got Mickey Fulp, and it's time for Mickey Fulp's major monthly market review, or should we say a monthly major market review. Either way you like it, Mickey, welcome back. Well, thanks. Good to be back, Kerry. Hey, so... Quite volatile, to say the least, uh, when we review our uh, our spreadsheet that you so uh, ably uh, compile each month. Stock markets for the first, uh, well, the second month in a row were decidedly negative. This is true. The Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ, the three major U.S. indices, we're all down something around 2 to 3% month over month, but 7% over the quarter. Um, the problems in the world continue to weigh down on the major markets. The U.S. economy is tepid in its growth, uh, led by the small caps, which are even worse, uh, which is a concern to me. The Russell 2000 down 5% over the month and 12% over the quarter. Meanwhile, the Toronto Stock Exchange, which is very commodities driven, uh, down 4%, 8.5% over the quarter. The big loser, once again, was the Toronto Venture Exchange. Took another down leg, uh, down 22% over the quarter, 6% over the month. Um, these are pushing all-time lows on a daily basis. The real concern here is usually there's a rally post-Labor Day in the Toronto Venture Exchange. and. Uh, Au contraire, this month down, as we said, 6%. Um, and, the, and I alluded to the problems of the world, and really that is led by China. We had the, the Shanghai stock market crash, um, and uh, the Chinese PMI, which uh, the Producer Manufacturers Index, which it really is a, a good barometer of the health of an economy or the growth of an economy, has been consistently below 50, the tipping point, uh, I think it was 47 this month. So uh, yeah, uh, the markets are down uh, and there's big concern. It's where do you put your money now? And there really are no good places. Uh, um, PMI uh, is down in China. PMIs are not particularly robust in the US, uh, Chinese. Um, markets are led that emerging market index down almost 19% for the quarter. Yeah, well, this is a case where the mattress is starting to look pretty darn good, isn't it? <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a bit, but uh, let's look first at uh, at the uh, currencies. Uh, U.S. dollar remains strong, although it's become somewhat range-bound in that plus or minus 95 range. It'll go up to you know the high 96, drop down into the high 94s. It finished the month at 96.44, um, up 1% for the quarter and the month. Uh, Euro, once again, is range bound. It it has stayed in that plus or minus $1.11 range now for, geez, uh, about six months with a couple of perturbations in that. Um, Ten-year Treasury, well, the Fed Fed doesn't know what to do, still hasn't raised rates as if a quarter percent raise in rates is going to do anything. Um, but the uh, U.S. Treasury interest rate was down 7% over the month, 12% over the quarter. Um, you know, it closed at 2.06%. I think the problem here is the Fed's afraid of China. And... Uh, you know, in the interim, we've had the uh, the UN was devalued, uh, and so yeah, three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very quick. So rapid fire um, succession. Yep. Yeah, so it's uh, who knows what's going to happen, but the the Fed is afraid of something. I think the Fed's afraid of China, and that's the reason they won't uh, 
raise our rates a quarter percent. Um, finally, uh, in pseudo currencies, we have Bitcoin at 236. It seems to have formed a base in this range of, uh, of the low to mid 200s. And I dare say that will be the base until the next big event happens in Bitcoin. So uh, who knows whether it'll be Silk Road or an exchange found to be corrupt or goes down <laughs> or whatever. But it, it looks like it's foreign to base until we have our next big event. Yeah, the big event could be on the upside. Uh, you know, bank runs in a few countries in the EU. Uh, who knows what can happen here? I mean, we're dealing in a world here that is so unstable and so directionless. Uh, there's no leadership anywhere. And, uh, and then we've got wars breaking out everywhere, uh, not to be overly pessimistic, but, but these are the things that are going to drive the market and potentially could see Bitcoin uh, regain its, its lost luster for sure. Well, maybe so, but I dare say that uh, gold will probably regain some luster before Bitcoin does. You know, I, I know you've been traveling in Argentina and right now we've got the... Uh, uh, the uh, populist Pope uh, and his, uh, who is Argentinian. Yes. Uh, and uh, and it was raised under Peronist policies. I'm sure you could speak to that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's uh, now promoting a political agenda, which is is very anti-capitalism. And, uh, you know, it's this mix of, of the Pope and politics and government, I find to be a bit unholy. Uh, but... Besides that politi geopolitical rant, uh, let's look at what the metals did this month. Yeah, let's had... not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, gold is, is uh, range-bound in the low 1100s. Uh, there's just not a lot of uh, uh, things going on in the market that gets anybody excited. Uh, uh, Chinese and Indian demand for gold remains strong. Um, most of the pundits are negative on gold, but once again, uh, I mean, we don't really need to go deeply into it, but it is money. And, and uh, you know, in times of financial duress, that's where, where you want to be. Uh, you know, cat, you, U.S. dollar, cash, and gold look about like the only things going on right now. Uh, yeah. Silver uh, remains less than $15, close a month at $14.52. Uh, it was down 7% over the quarter. Uh, the real problem in metals over the month was in platinum, and that was a political event or a, a, a business corruption event, I guess you would say. <laughs> What's the uh, difference? <laughs> What's the difference, Mickey? <laughs> well, <laughs> in this case, it was executives at Volkswagen who uh, uh, yeah. have been exposed uh, by uh, uh, fraudulently uh, designing software to make their diesel vehicles look more efficient and less polluting. And as a result, because diesel vehicles use a proportionally greater amount of platinum in their catalytic converters, uh, platinum took a big hit. It's at a low. Uh, last night closed at 9.06. That is a low since late 2008 when all the precious metals got hit in the global economic crisis is people liquidated their precious metals to cover margin calls. Um, platinum down over 10% over the month, over 16% over the quarter. And uh, for a while, palladium was very weak. Uh, we talked a couple of months ago how it was correcting as the other precious metals uh, started to move. Uh, uh, palladium went down. Uh, but we spent three weeks below $600 in from mid-August to uh, early September. But then Palladium has rallied, presumably, on Volkswagen's diesel problems. Now, the, bear in mind, these are speculative markets. And there's been a lot of speculation that, that this uh, uh, um, diesel emissions problem that was exposed at Volkswagen may in, be endemic to the uh, European diesel market. So uh, uh, once again, palladium uses it's used more in gasoline motors. So uh, there's been a little bit of a rally in palladium. Well, well you have to understand that the uh, auto industry 
it's regardless what mark is on your car, whether it's GM, Ford, Chrysler, Audi, uh, Mercedes, BMW, auto companies are in the auto parts business and they routinely sell auto parts to each other. In addition to which the suppliers that they buy from sell to all the companies. So to think that, uh, that this diesel, uh, diesel disaster is limited just to VW is naive because basically the big three in Germany all buy and sell to each other. And it's not unusual to have an Audi with a Mercedes transmission or a BMW, um, though usually they make their own engines, but sometimes you'll find uh, mm -hmm. that they're buying engines from each other especially uh, Audi and Volkswagen. There's no difference between them, just the price sign, uh, just the amount they charge for the cars, but the actual base cars built on the same chassis, built, um, you know, the same basic sheet metal. So this thing is going to spread. It's going to hit all of them. And now they're all in damage control mode. And um, hey, what happens to the palladium and platinum market uh, as a result, long-term damage? I don't know. Is it really going to gonna cut the number of cars that are sold, Mickey? I have no idea. Uh, here's what I do know. Uh, with gas at, I paid $1.99 a gallon for gasoline uh, at the pump in Bernalillo, New Mexico last week. And I don't think Elon Musk is going to sell very many Teslas if gasoline stays low. So um, <laughs> that's about as deep as I get into it. Let's finish the metals here, and then sure. we'll go on uh, to energy, which we've already alluded to. Um, copper over the month actually hit a high of 245 before falling off once again into the 230s, upper 230 range. It was down... 9% on a quarter on a close of 237. Uh, growth demand remains strong for, for copper and in place, um, uh, the, but the producers starting to come back, uh, starting to cut back, I should say, which results in supply disruption. So despite the big trouble that uh, copper giant Glencore is in right now, I expect uh, copper to make a rally at some point. Uh, if we look at our metal ratios, gold-silver remains in the uh, mid-70s. Uh, briefly, during this uh, market correction and, and the problems in China in late August, it briefly went above 80, but didn't stay there very long. Uh, platinum to gold at 0.82 and platinum to palladium at 1.4 are uh, uh, nearly historic. Um, lows, uh, at least since we've been tracking these indices over the last three years. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just amazing what's going on here with these, with these markets. I mean, mm, yeah. 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 Well, let's go back. Then let's go where things did get really amazing mm. over the last couple of months. And that's uh, with our oils. Uh, uh, yeah. To uh, pull a line off the who, we are right back where we started uh, the year uh, with WTI closed at $45 and change. Brent closed at $48 and change. Uh, if you look, those ratios are down 8 and 11 percent, respectively, over the month, and both down almost 24 percent over the quarter. So. Um, a lot of that has to do with geopolitics in the world. We are still oversupplied with oil, but uh, uh, Obama went in and did a deal with Iran, and so that's upset the oil markets because they see increased production from Iran. Um, you know, and if you look at the amount of of uh, oil that Iran produces and the amount of, that they're capable of ramping up. Uh, I don't really think it's going to be a big problem. It's not a great amount of oil, and most of that oil is going to go to the Chinese to begin with. So uh, I think that's a bit overblown, but we'll see when uh, oil markets recover here. Everybody's getting hurt, including the majors now. Uh, Henry Hub has been range-bound, and you know I wouldn't say flat because the gas prices 
are relatively volatile, but at, at a price of uh, the upper two two fifties to less than three dollars all year, you know, there's uh, just no excitement in the in the gas markets. I saw a couple of days ago that Carl Icahn is making a run at Chenier Energy, which is the offshore Louisiana LNG uh, company. You know, the real problem we have with oil business in the U.S. is uh, it's tied up in Congress. We still can't export oil. And so we, you've got the uh, refiners uh, lobbying against. You've got Republican senators and most Democratic senators pushing for a lifting of this oil export ban. And then you've got Obama talking out of both sides of his jaw again. So who knows? So what um, else is new? But hey, yeah. you know that uh, Hillary Clinton, the purported candidate for president, and I wonder sometimes, came out against the uh, Keystone XL pipeline. Interesting, huh? Yeah, well, I, there's some speculation that it will never be built now. But uh, yeah, well, uh, let's let the election get closer before we start beating up on uh, Hillary and Trump and the yeah. other uh, clowns <laughs> that are running. Well, you you know that uh, you know that Trump will be pro pipeline and just uh, not to get into the politics, but the Teamsters, who the union seems uh, most poised to gain from Keystone XL, is seriously considering uh, endorsing Trump and not going with the Democrats because of Keystone XL. So these uh, these idiotic, uh, environmentally motivated uh, decisions that pander to different groups do have consequences down the road, both for the economy and for their very own careers for the people making them. All right. Uh, and then we'll finish up with uranium. It pushed up to almost $38 a pound on the spot price uh, uh, in mid-month, but it's since fallen back. Close the month at 36 and a quarter, uh, down 2% over the month, 1% over the year. But, but still, uh, if we look back uh, considerably above uh, from not much more than a year ago when it was mucking around in the $28 range. Yeah, way up from there, and you know these markets, man. Nothing is uh, nothing is safe. It feels like now, Mickey. You know, nothing is is really safe. Even those uh, T bills and Treasury bonds, you know, they're going to see their day as well. Well, that's true, Carrie. But uh, there is one safe haven. And that's the insurance policy. So uh, yeah, uh, buy right. gold whenever you can at these prices, and and also. Uh, you know, I continue to accumulate platinum. Uh, it's hard to uh, to look at the platinum and gold ratio and, and say, well, uh, if my next bars of whatever I'm going to buy need to be platinum, and that's what I've been yeah. doing. I mean, it just platinum doesn't trade below gold very often or for very long. This period of time is a real anomaly, and you got to believe that it's going to revert to the mean, which means that platinum will be trading at a premium over gold, and that uh, perhaps uh, perhaps all metal prices will deflate, and platinum will just deflate less. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that this situation is not going to last. So play it accordingly. And Mickey, so mercenarygeologist.com, obviously that's your primary site. we got five other places to find you. Tell us where, <laughs> where to go. Well, we've got at Mercenary Geo, the Twitter feed. We are now well over 50,500 Twitter followers. And of course, uh, mercenarygeologist.fm, which We'll have this interview up in the next day or so. All right. Well, hey, you're getting like uh, Trump. Pretty soon you're going to have as many Twitter followers as the Donald at this rate, <laughs> Mickey. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not going to compete with a Donald. If I did that, I would have to go bankrupt. Four yeah. Times. Yeah. Well, you can never go bankrupt enough if you're in that situation. <laughs> if you're not, if if you're Donald Trump, I guess not. <laughs> but uh, anyway, go check out our site, uh, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. If you're listening to the show from the site, then just uh, take a look at the various articles that are there. We post hundreds every week dealing with the exact issues Mickey and I are discussing, why things are the way they are, which is what you need to know if you're going to plan for the future. Mickey, we will talk to you next month, and hopefully these markets will have, uh, have found their footing. Well, you know what October is, and it's a month of crashes. So uh, whatever it is, buy gold, buy platinum, 
have some uh, U.S. dollars socked away and and we'll weather this and come out of the other end much better, I'm sure. Okay, well, we need a purge of the system. It's too corrupt. It rewards failure. It penalizes success. No way to run a country. No way to run an economy. So until that purge comes, everybody is at risk. Mickey, we'll talk to you soon. Be well. Uh, you too, Carrie. Thanks. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.